grow really long beards and wear bandanas? Yeah. Needs to be working. All right, we want to talk about this story that has gripped the nation over the past couple of weeks. The California kidnapping victim, Hannah Anderson, made her first public appearance. Look at this video as she sort of hustled in uh, to that room there when she, uh, after she was released from the abduction during that multi-state manhunt. Her father thanked both the police and also the people who spotted her with the suspect. I'm joined now by Dr. Keith Ablo, forensic psychiatrist and member of the Fox News Medical A-Team. Dr. Keith, welcome. Good to have you here. Thanks, Martha. Yeah, so many of us had the same reaction uh, when we saw that she you know, was on, uh, on the Internet uh, within hours after being released from her kidnapper. Uh, she was taking pictures of herself and sending them to friends and responding to questions, apparently, about her abduction and about uh, her abductor being killed. Then she shows up in this situation at this fundraiser. I is that normal to you? Uh well, as a forensic psychiatrist, we're going to learn there's more to this story than we know at present. The part of the story that here seems quite bizarre is that this young woman isn't grieving in any way that we would consider productive. Uh, her ability to go out and attend a fundraiser, to answer questions on internet sites, to post photos of herself, suggests that she is at a distance from her internal suffering. And the question would be, is this a new phenomenon born of trauma, or is this the way Han Hannah Anderson always lived, at it's least in her teen years? And could that be in any way involved, not blaming the victim here, but could she have missed cues about how serious a threat this man was because her head was in the Internet clouds? It's a very interesting question. And, of course, everybody's heart go out to this girl. She lost her mother and her little brother, who was nine years old, uh, they were tortured, we understand, in the garage, and their bodies were found in the burnt-out rooms of the house. She was then taken into the woods. There, there's so many questions. He was very close to this family. He used to, this man, her abductor, used to drive her back and forth to cheerleading practice. According to some reports, they took some day trips together at different points. Uh, he had really put himself right into the middle of this family. Does that explain any of, of what appears to be sort of, you know, her not processing all of this yet? Well, look, my heart goes out to her, too, as you mentioned, everyone's does. I don't know if her heart goes out to her. I don't know if she's divorced from herself. And where's her dad in this mix? What kind of father? And again, the man's been through hell. But what kind of dad has his daughter, who's still only 16 and been through her own hell, out on the Internet raising money? Like, what sort of family preexisted the horror and should we take a lesson from this, that we ought to know the real threats against us and not be losing ourselves in the fantasy and fiction of Facebook, because this guy was really bad news. And I don't know whether this young woman would have known it, registered it, been able to tell anybody about it in any real way or not, because I think her divorcing herself from reality probably predated these events. It could. Uh, and her grandmother said that she hasn't processed it yet. The funerals have not even happened yet for her mother uh, and for her little brother. And, and, I, and I really don't mean this to sound critical, but I, I am just, it's, it's a very unusual reaction uh, that, that's happening here. And I think it does go back to what you're talking about. It could, perhaps, this kind of you know, distance that so many young people seem to feel from everything because they can hop online and answer a bunch of people's questions and never have to really interact it may not be too much to say that Handers Hannah Anderson will not be attending, not in any real way, the funerals of her brother and mother because Hannah Anderson isn't available and may not have been available psychologically even before these crimes. So being able to walk out of the woods after horror and resume your life as an Internet darling is not necessarily a sign of strength. You know, it could be a doctor, sign of so some real people weakness. might listen to this conversation and say, boy, how do you know what she's feeling? I mean, th this young girl has been through a lot, no matter what the underlying truth of all of this is. What would you say to them? Well, what I, say, what I would say is that uh, that's why, after 20 years as a forensic psychiatrist, I am careful to make these comments. However, when a thing is bizarre, one ought not turn away from it. We don't want to replicate what this family did with this killer. What we want to do is say, wait, this is very strange. What is this phenomenon? Because what it is not is normal grieving. No way there's something else behind it, period. People can criticize me for saying that, 
But I'm telling you right now, there is. All right. We'll see. Dr. Keith Ablo, very right. interesting. Thanks, Thank Mark. you very much. You know, strong reaction from yeah. him, too. And you've got this report also out there that they were exchanging letters right. or had at least a dozen telephone calls that, that went day between them. That before the abduction. That's right. So 